Trapping is just one of those things. You either got it or you don't. I'm going to be honest, I mostly don't. I'm not that good. On top of that, I broke almost everything I own this winter and even broke some stuff I didn't own. So that's great. I still consider myself lucky though because I get to get out and experience the, the wilderness and that's cool. Before we get started, thanks for stopping in. We're doing the best that we can to bring you these kind of down-to-earth videos about what we get up to in the interior. Today, I'm hiding out in our nice warm cabin and I'm doing everything in my power not to go outside because it's cold. It's the end of a rough trapping season, so it's a perfect day to skin some marten and be thankful for what we were able to catch. Now, skinning animals, it's as much of a like an art as it is a science, and I'm not going to try to teach that myself because I'm still learning. I'm just hopeful that you're going to come and learn with me. That said, to make sure some worthwhile information gets passed on to you, I invited Scott, one of my best friends and a lifelong Alaskan as well. Scott was raised in the small village of Circle, located on the banks of the Yukon River, three or four hours-ish away from Fairbanks, depending on the time of the year. Scott was raised as a placer gold miner in the summer and a trapper in the winter. To show us his skinning method, he'll be using my kitchen table and an old-timer skinning knife he bought on the way to my place because neither one of us could find any of the half-dozen old-timers we own between the two of us. My wife Megan is working on some of her beautiful macrame, hashtag wears by Megan. The dogs are fed and watered, and it's time to go ahead and get started. Now we're back on the here. Probably might have to use your bidet on these, but they're good. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, buddy? How you doing? What's up? Hey, good to have you back. So, we're skinning some Martin, hey? Oh, yeah. yeah. So, I brought Scott, because he's a pro, and he's skinned hundreds of them, and I've skinned about four, so... He's gonna do his and I'll do mine. So Yeah. Yeah, it's been a little while, but you know, like riding a bike. Yeah. I hope. Yeah. <laughs> so when you skin your Martin, how do you like to do them? Uh start at the, the butthole mm -hmm. and split it three ways, one down each leg, kind of you know, dead centered on the back of the leg, all the way up to the base of the foot, and then all the way down to the tip of the tail. Mm -hmm. And then you kind of just start skinning it out around there and then using your fingers to peel it, peel it off and then split the front legs. And once you get it around the legs and off the tail, kind of just all by hand, you're able to pull it all the way down, work the front legs out. And then once you get it up to the ears and then you'll do some more uh, skinning with the knife, get the ears off all the way down and that's about it. Do you think you'll be able to do it without giving them a big eye? Yeah, I, I might be able to. Yeah, just kind of keeping it close to the, the skull, and and same with the ears too. Sometimes people mess up, and you know you're not skinning close enough to the head, and then it chops off part of the ear. But uh, yeah, we'll see how it comes out. I'm Go. making no promises, but <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Do you wear gloves when you skin, Scott? No, no, I don't wear gloves usually. I don't wear gloves for mechanic, and I don't wear gloves for. Anything other than to keep my hands warm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Show me some magic here, Scott. Okay. This is a brand new knife, so it's like razor sharp. Just try not to like go through the leg entirely. And than I would like, but make sure it's cut all the way through. So tell me about them glands, buddy. Yeah, yeah, those are, you kind of, you want to stay clear of them if you can help it. You know, sometimes you nick them and you'll see why you want to stay clear of them because they'll, 
make a mess and smell funky. Mm-hmm. So, if you're working without a tail stripper, this part can be just a little tedious. Watch how Scott uses his fingers as a guide, and it helps to keep sure that he's getting the most of each cut. Obviously, just be careful not to cut yourself. Just take your time. <laughs> how old were you when you skinned your first Martin? Uh, see, I did a lot of stretching when I was like you know, 10 to 13. I think he probably trusted me to skin one around 12 or 13 or so. He was the skinner there just because he didn't want to have a bunch of holes in him. It was money. So where are you at there? Let's I'm about an inch from the tip of it. I'm going to try to go a little farther just so I don't screw yours up. And then, yeah, once he got him opened up, bleeder. Ooh. I better keep it over the towel, huh? Sorry. Then we'll just skin around here because there's there's muscle and ligaments that are kind of holding it together. Let me skin it back a little bit more. See so yeah, how I I went deep into the leg too. It's mm. like I don't like to get a lot of meat, huh? so I'll try to like even now I can use my finger and get that meat off of the skin, so it's not coming off with it. Yeah, less fleshing. Yeah. yeah. If you're doing your Martin for taxidermy quality, you'll do the paws and everything, but these aren't trophy Martin, so we're gonna be yeah. just cutting the feet off. Yeah, you don't get any more value from the fur buyer. Let's pull the fur as far down as you split it. Get it way down there and then let's cut it off. Take it kind of as much fur off the face as you can be. Tail. I'm gonna skin around it a little bit so I can get get behind it. And then I'll start working it with my fingers down slowly. Try not to put too much strain on it. Just kind of yeah. Then once I can get it like this, I can just slowly work it down. Yeah. Getting there. There you go. Tail. Tail. All right. So and before I start rolling it down, I'm gonna split the front legs, starting at the armpit, same thing, go up to here. And then when I get up to there, then I can pull my legs through, cut out the paws. Awesome. first muscle that I ever skinned was that mink that uh, that you caught, that bycatch that you had, uh -huh. that you gave me, and uh, I sat down, and you can do it in 10 minutes, it took me like an hour, Yeah. first one, yeah. Yeah, it was mink too, they're, they're a little stinkier weasel. Yeah.
It's all the visceral tissue on the stomach there. Yeah. I'm cut all that off. Hold on to it a little bit. poking out. Pull those through. Then I'll go up to, usually it's kind of a little on the cool side, but yeah. pull it up till about the, the ears. Yeah. So this this is, yeah, see, because if you looked at it, Kind of looks like okay, all your skin's up here, but actually your, your ears are way back here. So you you got to start skinning it off the head. You kind of pinch it and just just keep your knife pointed down and close to the skull. If you take off a little extra meat, so be it. You can clean that up on the board. You but, you'd rather take extra meat in this part. Yeah. Because if you don't, you're gonna end up with tears in the in the pelt on the on the skull side there. Yeah. Yeah, this is the, one of the more tedious parts where you're just slowly skinning around the eyes and getting it all the way off the head. to the skull and little swipes so you're not cutting into the hide. time I've skinned one out in front of me like this usually it's all on your lap all on my lap yeah, yeah it's just more comfortable and easier to move around I guess no so I usually do them on the couch <laughs> in my lap with the coffee table there you know yeah my wife is pretty awesome for letting us Skin these animals at the kitchen table. That's yeah. Kind of nice lady. <laughs> as long as you clean up the mess. You right? know how many dead animals have I come across this kitchen table now? <laughs> stories of guys who tried them but uh, tried links 
You know, I've heard Lynx is delicious. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I used to eat, a, eat it a lot as a kid. My mom, she made it like <clears throat> breaded and like pork chops and it has this real similar taste to pork. It's like white meat, mm -hmm. similar texture. Yeah, I didn't mind it at all. It was really good. Okay, almost done. What he's doing right there is cutting the snoot. Yeah. Now it looks like kind of wooden skinned Martin. <clears throat> a little bit of nightmare fuel for you mm -hmm. if you ever wanted it. Some straight out of your nightmares. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so yeah, then you gotta got the hide there. We'll slap it on the board, huh? Yeah. After Scott got that first Martin on the stretching board, it was time for me to give it a try. It went a lot better than it has in the past, but I decided not to include it in this video because it, it wouldn't have added any real like educational value. I also decided to split the stretching and fleshing into a second video, and that's just to simplify the editing process, and I'll get that video up just as soon as I get a chance. In the meantime, I'm urging all of you to go outside and get some time in the wilderness. If you're going to be hunting, fishing, or trapping, just make sure you're following the seasons and the bag limits for the area that you're going. Also make sure that while you're out, you're properly representing the outdoors community. You know, the way that I think about it is to be thoughtful, ethical, and thankful. It's the easiest way for me. Again, I want to thank everybody for watching this. And if you haven't yet, please like, subscribe, and share this video. It's the absolute best way to make ptarmigan butts into a, a like a giant media empire. And I'm not putting all, the, all of my eggs in that basket, but this is turning into something that's fun to do. Till next time.